It probably comes as no surprise to you that I am a pretty big parks and recreation fan. I did, in fact, name my best lady friend Ann Perkins. So this week's video goes out to one of my favorite fictional holidays of the year, and that's Galentine's Day. Galentine's Day started um, by Leslie Nope on Parks and Rec and then kind of like picked up steam. I am incredibly fortunate to have some very strong, independent, inspirational, loyal, admirable women in my life. And I wanted to take a moment to celebrate them, but also when I was uh, preparing this video specifically for some sort of Galentine's Day celebration, I was a little concerned with what I found in my research. So if you go into YouTube and type in Galentine's Day, what you will find are a list of videos on how to throw the perfect Galentine's Day party. Now, the origin of Galentine's Day on Parks and Rec is kind of like a lady-centric brunch. In the first Galentine's Day, Leslie Nope gives out gift bags with like certificates for facials and cross-stitched pillows with like her friends' faces and then the headline from the day they were born, which is great if that is your thing and that's how you show your affection. I love a good craft, but I am not down to put the emphasis of how we celebrate each other on the decor of a brunch. I think that puts unnecessary pressure on ourselves to make things cute and flowery, and that's really not what I think this day should be about. And this is absolutely not to get all high and mighty about crafts or cute things. Literally everything in this frame has come from a woman who is a, a very vital part of my life. And we love floral, guys. If we're celebrating our lady friends, I think it should be more about taking the time to tell each other that we love each other and we're grateful for each other's friendship and share what we like about each other and maybe be a little more vulnerable than we would be on the reg. So I was like, okay, benefit of the doubt, YouTube. Galentine's Day is a frilly made up holiday. What happens when you search female friendship? Let's see. Incognito, female friendship. When I searched incognito on YouTube, six of the 10 top results were about why female friendship is hard or toxic or why women betray each other. The more I thought about it and um, reflected on how far away from my actual experience some of those statements are, I got more motivated to make a video that one, celebrates those women in my life that I am so grateful to have behind me that help lift me up and that I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to then lift them up in return and this beautiful symbiotic relationship. And also rant about how maybe we're focusing too much on the negative when it comes to female friendship and what we can do about it. Okay, so here's the part where I'm gonna get a little cozy and a little bit more vulnerable with you, my friend, to tell you about how my female friendships have impacted my life. I get way more out of these relationships than I put in. And to know how many top tier humans have backed me through terrible decisions I've made in my life. And don't get me wrong, they expressed their disapproval, but loved me anyway when I ignored them. Or friends that I knew were making a bad decision and I expressed disapproval and then loved me anyway for stating my opinion. There is something magical in a relationship that is based on like a combined commitment to each other's best interest. The day I married my husband, there were 12 women standing up with us, like down for the cause <laughs> to support me in a lifelong relationship, each of them knowing what kind of commitment they were making by being there. And more importantly, my husband knowing that by committing to me, he's committing to helping me uphold each of these relationships. And in the weeks leading up to my wedding, I was experiencing a depressive episode. I don't want to get too far into that because it can be triggering for a lot of people and myself. And that's not what I want to talk about today. But what I do want to talk about is the way my women showed up for me. And that's how you get these lifelong bonds that I am so 
so lucky to have. They've made me the person that I am and these people root for me every day and it gives me the courage to do things like this and they make me feel worthwhile when I don't believe it. So build yourself a lady army because this feeling that it produces is irreplicable. And if you're watching this because you need a friend, I hope you know that I've got your back and that I will stand up for you when you don't feel like standing up for yourself because I know exactly how that feels and how it feels when someone does that for you. And it's not always easy to maintain these relationships like everything else, it takes work, um, but more than anything else in my life, it's worth it. I take such pleasure and joy watching my friends grow into their potential and having kids or graduating from grad school or pursuing their dreams and making mistakes along the way and it is just so meaningful to share in someone's life on a deep level when you don't really have any attachment to them other than like a mutual agreement that we're gonna be here for each other. And when women tell me they have a hard time making female friendships or lady friends are toxic or we're in constant competition with each other, or she's just jealous because I have something she wants, it makes me cringe. And I think collectively we need to squash that narrative because we, we each get so much out of lifting the other person up. And I don't mean to say this in a way that I am like the ideal friend. I've been truly terrible to some women that did not deserve it. And I will always be sorry for that. And I'm also not saying that like you should carry on toxic relationships that no longer serve you or the other person. It's one thing to like show up, clink some champagne glasses, giggle and go home. It's another to check on your people, to make sure they're doing okay, to let them know that you love them and you support them in whatever they're going to do and mean it. And I am not an expert in building these types of friendships. I've just been really lucky enough in my own life to have them manifest. If you are interested on like the magic recipe that can help lead to these types of friendships, I highly recommend you check out Shasta Nelson's TED Talk, link in the description and above. And again, I just have to reiterate how grateful I am to have women in my life that just thinking about how amazing they are brings me to tears and it's a two-way street and it's up to you to build it beyond the surface level go beyond brunch share your insecurities and like truly listen each woman in my life brings me some different type of joy has introduced me to a new type of like perspective on the way that you can look at the world and bring your best self to every day. And that's through humor and knowledge and commitment and loyalty and justice and creativity. It's going to take us all to enact the change I think this world needs. So. I'd like us to spend more time lifting each other up and less time talking about ways that we bring each other down. And maybe this time next year, if you Google female friendship, there's gonna be at least six positive, <laughs> positive videos and we'll flip the script. Um, let me know in the comments below how you are celebrating Valentine's Day, if you are, or what you love about your BFFs. Um, hit that like button if you liked this type of content. Subscribe if you want to hang out with me as I continue my intentional journey. Or don't. Use that time to go tell someone you love that they're awesome. I'd actually prefer that. Have a good week. I'll see you around.